Hey guys, it's Llama, and this is my one take guide to DG crafting. So, what is DG crafting? Well, this is training crafting via dungeoneering. It is the best effective crafting XP per hour for irons, not for mainscapers, but some mainscapers may want to do it if they're a little stingy with their GP at the Grand Exchange. At low levels, you can get around 40k an hour, and it scales up and over 100k an hour at higher levels and with perfect gearing and with good knowledge of dungeoneering. As with normal dungeoneering, this kind of thing scales with your knowledge and your ability to actually train the skill. So, how is this done? Well, it's via earning the most GP you can reasonably earn in a floor. You can skip the tougher mobs, and you can skip the harder to reach rooms or the boosting rooms and you use this gp to buy protomastic hides that's the tier one hides and thread at the smuggler and you get 99 crafting xp per body at the end of a floor very good crafting method very great xp per hour and as i said this is effective crafting xp so you might get more if you're just cutting dragon stones that you've been earning via slayer but if you're looking purely on an hour to hour basis you'll probably have to do hundreds of hours of slayer to get one hour of dragon stones to cut whereas this is a very consistent trainable grindable method of earning crafting xp so how exactly do you earn this gp well that's done by fully clearing floors so you open all available doors but don't bother boosting for doors as normal and you kill the mobs that are reasonable to kill so if you run into a bad shade or a bad skeleton go ahead skip it it's not worth the time you take the coins the charms the torn bags the valuable alkables that are there you alk those alkables you save those other items you can chop high tier woodcutting hotspots and high tier mining hotspots. Only chop those woodcutting hotspots if you can really fletch the logs, otherwise you can collect those items as tertiaries for pouches. If you're not going to use them as tertiaries for pouches or you don't have high enough levels to really make that many pouches, just skip the hotspots entirely. And then at the end of a floor, you alk the items you collected. You alk the items that you fletched, assuming you could fletch things like unstrungs or um, staves. And you alk the pouches that you were able to make with those torn bags and those charms and tertiaries that you may or may not have collected. Some people will ask what floor should you do and other similar things, and I'm just going to refer them to my old dungeoneering guide really i went over this sort of thing but general rule of thumb is the first two-thirds of the floors you have unlocked should be smalls and the last one-third should be mediums and only stick to c6 because it ups your xp per hour to the best of my knowledge well if you're going to do dg crafting only do it in c6 smalls don't bother doing mediums it's not worth the xp per hour at least from what I've tested with only one gate stone. If you really want to, you can just keep running these C6 malls over and over again, the first two thirds of your floors, and that's only if you don't care for the dungeoneering XP, like if you've already grinded out dungeoneering, you're just looking at how to finish up your crafting levels right now because you want to max soon, then you can repeat these floors. Otherwise, I would suggest, because it makes your dungeoneering XP per hour more effective, to do DG crafting for the first two-thirds of your floors, as you normally would, the C6 smalls, and then the last one-third of your floors, keep it normal, C6 mediums, ignore crafting, just burn through it, get that dungeoneering XP, and kind of intermix the two methods. It becomes really tedious, it's really slow training for both skills, at least it feels like it, but it's also very effective, it increases your EHP or you your effective hours played if that's something that you care about and yeah those are the floors that you pick that's how you run the floors if you have any questions throw them down below I'll be here I'll put a little video in the description of me actually running a floor kind of sped up show you what I'm doing and yeah that's it for this guide hope it helped see y'all next time